Welcome to Wanna Be a Pro Wrestler. Me too. My name is Nikki Heat, and here are our goals to develop beginner. Welcome to Wanna Be a Pro Wrestler. Me too. My name is Nikki Heat, and here our goal is to develop beginner pro wrestlers by improving their knowledge on how to become the best professional wrestlers they can be in the modern era of sports entertainment. Our topic today is top 10 ways to make real money as a beginner professional wrestler. And we're not just going to list the top 10 things, but we're going to go through and make an entire tier list. So that way you can kind of get an idea of which ones should be high priority and which ones should take more time. Our first way to make real money as a professional wrestler will be merchandise. Our first way to make real money as a pro wrestler will be merchandise. And I'm going to put this one all the way at the top in probably a tier s tier it's got to be s tier right merchandise has to be s tier it has your logo it has your name it probably has your hashtag something that rec recognizes you to your audience it shows that they're representing you there isn't much better of a way for pro wrestlers to make actual money and if you're beginning you might make little money so you have to be more conscientious and actually that's what the rest of this is going to be about the second one is an only fans so initially it was supposed to be all nude i think i'm not entirely sure to be honest but it's mostly mostly sexual content when you think about it but People have been using it like a virtual gimmick table. I know Dahlia Monroe has been saying that she's listing stuff on there that's PG-13 material, and she's made tens of thousands of dollars a month at certain points. So I know that it's been very successful for her. But I don't know if that is something that everyone wants to do. And I know that the, the stigma around OnlyFans is kind of something that people haven't caught up with yet. So... I'm going to put this one in C tier. It's good for what it is, but for what pro wrestling is, there are better ways to make money, but there are many ways to make that kind of money that quickly with essentially what is your body. So if you're able to have that confidence and you can get the market for it, go for it. But I don't know that many men in pro wrestling that are interested in doing OnlyFans, but 
I feel like the bigger pain point there is getting someone to pay for it because you have to have a certain demographic already in place. So that's the reason I would put it there. The next one on our list is going to be podcasting. I'm going to put this right in B tier. I think that's really important. And I think that for me, the reason why I initially actually started podcasting was just to become a better presenter, a better speaker, and a better way to articulate my thoughts and to get that creative juice flowing, especially during this COVID issue and this the last two years of our lives, essentially. I'm going to put it in B tier because there is a way to make real money and there are professional podcasters, but it only gets hindered just by the fact that it isn't it isn't going to be quick it's not something that you can make money with tomorrow you can't post it and say okay i'm making money for my anchor for my for my podcast want to be able for wrestle me too it's on anchor so i get to put in a certain amount of ads in a video and it's basically just anchor supporting anchor so what ends up happening is for every 1500 views I get, I believe, or maybe no, it's CPM, it's click per thousand. For every thousand views I get of the audio, the specific little chunk that I did the, to record for them, it it gives me $15. So if you want to make $15 by recording a thousand podcasts and listening to each one once, or somehow having a thousand fans listen to it once, then you're good to go. You'll make 15 bucks, but it's not a sustainable way to make a living. It's more to supplement in income. So we take our fish oil, our daily vitamin, our protein powders. Those are supplements. It's to supplement other nutrition, mostly the, the micronutrients. So this is to supplement it. It's to add on to it and to be able to further it even more. So it's not something that is most likely going to be your full-time job. One of my favorites is actually, I think I want to put this in B tier as well. It's going to be DVDs and action figures. So when you're at the gimmick table, you can relist, resell for whatever you want. You can sell it for $1,000, but not everyone's going to want to pay $1,000 for your Jeff Hardy with one arm and um, your dog ate the foot. But if you can go on eBay and kind of figure out the the buying point for those to make money to buy a bulk of 20 wrestlers for 50 bucks that's possible usually i try to stay under three bucks in action figure so that way if i lose one two or three of them or whatever or they're all a couple of them are broken i try to be very consistent with the ones that i pick to sell for five dollars and if you want to do the little bit extra work we're going to get into listing on ebay and We're going to get into listing online here. Right there. Yeah, so online sales, so Mercari, eBay and stuff. You can start to make a little bit more money, but you're going to spend more time on it. And that's one of the big things as being a wrestler is you're trying to be efficient with your time. So for the DVDs and the action figures, if you can sell them for 5 or $10 a piece and you can make it quick, I made more money selling action figures and little bracelets and little toys like that that were essentially a part of my gimmick and wrestling related some people might frown upon selling dvds or action figures but when you look at this as a business the way i do every dollar counts and being able to stretch extra dollars a little bit further you're turning pennies into nickels into dimes into quarters so you're able to turn this into something that's more sustainable and it'll create this this snowball effect where you're starting to make not just forty dollars because you're booked somewhere and then you're losing trans and so on and so forth and you have to eat right so you're able to take that and add a little bit of money in between to having to pay for the gym maybe your merchandise for the for the week pays for your gym for the month if you go to end time fitness you probably sell as many buttons as coda jacobs you know maybe you'll sell five buttons a month if you're lucky love you coda but Hopefully this audio hasn't been messed up on my hair. I wanted to let you guys know that I still got it like that. Because I don't wear my hair like this unless I'm wrestling, really. 
so for the online sales you can list stuff around your house you can buy stuff online resell it there's a lot of different ways to resell and it is a great way to to begin to make money but there's um there's a pain point in beginning because you have to understand you have to do a fair amount of research so i want to put this in c tier it's good for what it is but there are better ways as a pro wrestler because you're going to spend so much more time messing around on the internet instead of studying that it's going to feel like it's a real job because some people do this as a real job so take that into concern into it take that into consideration the next one we have is patreon and Patreon is so close to S tier, but the one thing about Patreon that becomes difficult is that it's going to be based off of, go figure, how many people you can convince to spend extra money on you. So what people do with their Patreons is they'll they'll cut specific promos for people. I know people have sold promos. Coda Jacobs has actually sold a promo or two. And it's um, Vimeo. No. Mm. Pause. Pause. Let's Okay, ten minutes. I think I finished. Oh, Patreon. So the reason Patreon is going to be put in A tier is just because of the complications with having to set it up and having to be able to reach out. But not just that, but you also have to be consistently making content, which is great if you can do a promo every other day or something and you can kind of have fun with it. Or you can do other stuff and be more creative. But Patreon does take a cut and getting people to subscribe kind of can become difficult. But it's actually one of the best ways to get in touch with your true fans and you can start to see who your real fans are because commenting is great sharing is awesome liking loving laugh react angry react whatever it is engaging with you across twitter instagram facebook is is awesome but the people that are willing to go that extra mile and spend maybe two dollars three dollars to get like a discount on your next set of merch or a uh early access to other stuff that you're doing other shenanigans your workout routine or a specific time that they're spending to be able to be with you if you do like a monthly call there's a lot of different ways to utilize patreon that makes it one of the best ways to make money as a beginning professional wrestler but the only thing holding it back is as a beginning professional wrestler you might not have as much to offer right away but the sooner you can start getting to sell yourself with the matches and with some matches and being able to create that bond with people, you're going to start to develop more over time, more quickly, and allow that snowball to happen. Ring-worn gear, I'm going to put this in C tier, and I don't really know if there's any real F tiers to, to make money, but ring-worn gear is something that not everyone is going to have the opportunity to to do so to speak everyone has gear but for me i'm very sentimental with my gear my girlfriend's made three pairs of my trunks or something like that and 
it, it's special to me. So I might not want to sell my gear. I don't want to necessarily sell my vest or my Tomahawk kid staff, stuff like that. So if, if you're very sentimental with your pro wrestling career, like I am, you're not going to be able to turn this out as quickly, but having to go through getting ring worn gear, you have to have purchased gear. You have to have gone and bought a logo or had a designer make it, or just put your name across it, something special and personalize it. And you're signing it and you've taken care of it. And you know what? I talked myself out of it. It, it, for those people that aren't sentimental with it, it's gear. It's old. It's in your way. Sell it. B tier. It might even be A tier. Yeah, it's A tier. It's definitely A tier. I talked myself way up out of that one. I'm good at that. Bookings. S tier. The only thing bad about bookings is getting hurt, getting heat, stuff like that. Just simple stuff. But if you're a pro wrestler, you truly want to be getting booked. The best way to add on to every single thing here, whether it's your merch, your Patreon, you're a podcaster, you're selling ring-worn gear. The reason that it's all so successful is because I'm going to actually make this like that. So that way you guys understand how severe it is. It's number one, number one. It It is the best way to be able to make money as a pro wrestler because not only are you making money, but you're growing your legacy and you're growing outwards. And don't just get stuck wrestling in the same state over and over again. You want to expand. So that's how you can grow your Instagram, your social media following. Because once those pages start to share you, other people will see it. And it takes a certain amount of time for people to find somebody to actually follow the page. Just think about how you do it yourself. How often do you like your friend's page? Even the people that you're close with, how, how many times do you have to see it before you like it? If I remember, I'll do it right away. But I don't always remember or think that I am or am not. Subscribe to them. It's just one of those things that people are forgetful and you don't want to take any single like or any single booking for granted private matches i've never done one it's a way to make money. I don't think the contact is overly terrible i don't think it's difficult to put a private match together it's basically a camp match with cameras but it's d tier because i don't know anyone that's done one and spoken with them personally but to do private matches and to be listed on a private match website, I feel like it's kind of shady. It's the the underground. It's like there's pro wrestling and there's death matches. And then on the far side of that, there's yarder matches. And then a little bit down the road from there, there's, there's private matches because you don't know who's running it. You have to be very careful. You're very, very susceptible to other hazards that are within their workplace you don't know who you're working with all the time and i don't know how far some of these matches go so i don't know if people need to be tested for stds for hepatitis for any of those things that happen in regular pro wrestling but with a little bit extra privateness to it because i wrestled in people's backyards i've done a birthday party it's awesome it's super cool they're so excited to be there but doing a private match with some cameras and some lights and maybe some towels on the floor. It, it's just, it throws me off. It puts a bad taste in my mouth, to be honest. I don't judge people who do it by any means. And that's kind of why I, why I want to put it in C tier, but just the, the potential of anything going wrong, even more so than in a regular match. It just doesn't, it doesn't flow with me very well. YouTube AdSense is going to get to be C tier. In order to make money on YouTube and like on Instagram or on Twitter, you have to have, you have to meet a certain following and it, it's very difficult to reach that threshold because you have to become familiar with thumbnails, titles, niching down and all these little things. And it takes a long time and it's more so about the journey than it is about the destination. And it should be something that is something that happens along the way as opposed to I got to get it. I got to get it. I got to get a thousand because it might work for some, but it's not going to work for everyone that way. Affiliate marketing is the, uns the unsung hero of 
pro wrestling, to be honest. And I'm going to put it in A tier. Hi, I don't think there's a low A tier. These are all great. If anything, I would move Patreon back. This is... There's no better way to share with your audience what you're listening to, what you're working out with, what what energy drinks you're drinking, what kind of stuff you can sell on Amazon that you use at home. So I have this TV over here. And if I say, this is the TV I use, this is what you guys should get. It's great. You're like, oh, okay. And then you get a certain percent back. So if you buy a $100 TV, I make three, $4 back on it. And if you do that over and over, which costs no one else any extra money, you know what? Affiliate marketing gets S tier just simply because it costs no extra money. And you can do it across every single platform. You can do it on Instagram. You can do it on Twitter. You can do it on YouTube. You can do it on Facebook. As long as you share the right link in the right way, you can make money with this. The top 10 ways to make real money as a beginner professional wrestler is to start having matches and to start getting your name out there and making sure that you're able to put on the performance that make people want to follow you.